Okay, hi guys! So as you can see from the title, I'll be discussing everything online dating and it's gonna be a really um, neutral and positive video because dating for me and for a lot of people can be quite a difficult experience and I don't wanna like put other people down because um, it's quite sensitive like people from different backgrounds and um, different perspective on things can affect how you date as a person and I'm going to be speaking from my experiences in Singapore and as an Asian Chinese female um, living in England so I'm just going to like dish on my stuff and also help you guys with some like tips on how to meet a nice person or like how to get a good date Okay so before we dive Before we dive into my personal story time, I'm going to thank... <laughs> I'm going to thank Bumble for sponsoring the entire video. Bumble is an online dating app that I use frequently in Singapore and in London. And I, as a recently single female, um, use online dating. I think it's... The way people meet nowadays and I select Bumble because Bumble allows me to make the first move and um, based on my overall dating experience I've always been a very forward and direct person when it comes to making the first move and Bumble supports that for me and I think it's just easier to break the ice like given how some people are pretty shy um, I don't mind taking charge and going forward and just like asking people out for a coffee like just like that and Bumble allows me to do that with women making the first move so don't be a shy um, I think there's a, some sort of stigma around like women making the first move but honestly time is precious and time is money and like I just want to like get to the point where we can actually have a conversation and not like text so I can like sense the vibe and I think that's like the best way to go about dating in my personal opinion. Another feature that I really like is also the in-app question so this just allows you to prompt um, conversations more easily and it's kind of less awkward because I never like know what to say if I like judging a profile online. I usually try to make a joke that helps I guess like being funny helps for me and lastly another feature that I really enjoy is the profile prompts because this gives you more of a guide as to what to put in the profile for me I enjoy like straight men who um, share their hobbies and like pets I really do enjoy a good pet um, sometimes I would even swipe because I'm more keen on meeting the pet no offense to the guy obviously like it just sometimes is really difficult to translate your personality online and I feel like it really takes some experiences and like try and test it to create like the best profile ever and um, no shame if you're not good at it because I'm not great myself um, I do love like a funny profile I feel like if you can translate some sort of humor onto an online present that's really good and always get uh, your friends to evaluate like I feel like if you have friends that care for you they'll give you honest feedback and it's something that is invaluable so if you are single and you're looking to meet me on Bumble <laughs> um, download Bumble um, try it out like given now that it's kind of locked down in Singapore it's nice to meet new people like it gets quite repetitive and I know for a fact that like it can be really isolating so like Having an app like such as Bumble gives you an opportunity to meet new people and have new conversations and have fun. See you guys there. When I, I guess people can relate to this. In Singapore, you tend to hang out with like smaller social circles. Not smaller, but the same few people and um, people tend to date within their social brackets so like when I was growing up like people were always like switch around like you know the girl group will always switch around the guy uh, the woman group will always switch around okay girls because we were like in teen we were teens back then now we're women but growing up we would like switch around so the boys would date the new the girls and then the girls would date the boys and that kind of grew up and now people just date within the similar social groups and 
I guess being in a small country, it can be quite repetitive and draining because you just end up having the same few conversations over and over again. So when I was recently single, when I was 20, um, that was like the first time I ever used Bumble. And that was when I met someone from another country in Singapore. So something that I really do enjoy about online dating is that you get to broaden your horizons in terms of like culture and race and that's really fun so I actually met someone who was from Australia who was in Singapore for work for like three months so we just dated casually nothing serious ever like arose from it super nice guy and like I enjoyed like our dates like, it was fun um and yeah like online dating helps you do that yeah but it was just nice to meet someone from Australia because I really like that accent good eye mate and Australian men are fit. Yeah, just my personal preference. I guess when it comes to like online dating as well, I can I can give you some tips. I'm not saying like I'm a professional. Um, I can only base these tips on my personal experiences. So like if they're not great, you can let me know in the video. <laughs> I mean in the comment section, not the video. And yeah, um, let's go with tip number one. I wrote it down guys, it was like very um, strategic I would say. How to spot a nice guy and have a best date. So these are like things that are positive. So like on getting the best date on how to spot a nice guy, yes that's what I meant. Personally, dating for me is difficult like even though I'm drop dead gorgeous. Sometimes you just have to like put yourself out there and that can be really tiring so I try to streamline the process the best way I can so that it will allow me to save time and just like meet the right person and these are the tips that I've compiled because I'm super hardworking and I want the best for you guys okay okay so on For women on getting the best date and how to spot a nice guy, okay. Tip number one, look out for profiles with highlighted hobbies or pets. Okay, for me, I love pets. I think having a pet, um, it's just an easy conversation starter because like people are really passionate about dogs or cats. And who doesn't love a cute cat? And like, putting out your hobbies, for example, for me like, my recent hobby, um, I've done like charity work recently. I only actually only did it once, so I can't say it's a hobby. But I can bring it up as topic of conversation. And if a man is very interested in giving back to society for the goodness of his heart, this is something that screams nice guy. And for me, that's really important. Like, I want to date someone that cares about other people but himself and cares about things larger than himself and than money. Next tip is remove the pressure from the days. Coffee on the first time you meet, I feel like that's like the best, 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 best way to like break the ice. It's casual, it's not too fancy like if you don't really like a person, like you have to sit through a whole dinner. Oh my god, it's so draining. Like you can't just leave. That's why coffee or drinks. Um, I don't drink that. Oh, should I do drink? But if um, I feel like daytime just has a lighter, more cheerful mood instead of like going for drinks. I know that's just me because um, I don't want it to be like too serious. I also want to keep like friends before anything. If we could get along as friends, then it makes sense for us to date. So like coffee, it's like more of a friendly environment. First date, it's like even though it seems like the best time to make the first impression, like if you put that expectation onto yourself, it makes you really stressed and nervous and that comes across um, to the person that you're seeing on the date and it makes them also feel really uncomfortable and they might think that you're not that guy that you want to be. You know what I mean? Like you just come off like creepy and even though you're not, it's just because you're stressed and when anxiety kicks in, trust me, like you get so stressed and like it's really stressful to talk to someone that you've never met before. Men, 
would appreciate the authenticity of yourself. Yeah. Being yourself. Okay, so I know I've met a lot of um, men um, who put on like a front to impress a woman and I think that was what has been taught by society like in bracket in bracket terms like to be like the macho man to be like yeah like I'm the boss let me get the bill like let me do everything for you which is nice obviously but if that's not you it comes across as fake and ingenuine and it also leads to like spillover effects onto the date and I feel like you can sense the energy like you know how in Singapore like people are like superstitious you know like feng shui and everything like everyone has like a aura to themselves like do you have a good aura or bad aura so when you're trying to be someone that you're not it always gives off something that's a bit like unsettling and I feel you don't want that you just want to be yourself if you like anime you just talk that you like anime and like maybe if your date doesn't like it then so be it like um if it's like a defining thing for you that your partner must like anime then obviously that person is not the person for you but if you're willing to compromise that's great like in relationships and like online dating you're never gonna meet like the perfect person like I think that's a lie like I think I've been conditioned to think that it's a lie <laughs> however relationships are all about compromise and you gotta find that perfect balance so like if you want someone that likes anime and like enjoys it with you then just be open and honest about it like there's no shame about it man like anime is fucking lit like I always talk about loving K-pop and I would I've never actually met a guy that likes K-pop um, that I've gone on a date with but if they do right that's lit man like I can be talking about K-drama like K-pop music with him, maybe learn a bit of Korean, like who knows, like the possibilities are endless. And yeah, like there's no shame about it. Yeah, so be yourself. Be yourself. And I think brings me to the next point. Like, if you want to genuinely impress someone, you don't have to go the orthodox route of always paying for everything. Um, my perception on this did change, like growing up, being in a conservative um, country like Singapore, it's expected financially that the guy always has to chip in for everything and that kind of puts like a lot of pressure on the guy as well and some sort of like I, I'm, I'm sure like both ways guys and women and men both have certain pressures to live up to but I feel like sometimes just paying for things is not not good enough what do you mean? It's not good enough? What I mean is that it shows like I think planning and like taking initiative. So for example, like um I've dated someone who wasn't very well to do, but it didn't really matter to me if he wasn't well to do because he took the effort to plan and make me feel special. And um we can do a lot of free things together, but it's more like taking the time out to plan and listening so like listening i think women all women love to be listened to and like making sure that you are listening and taking notes of what she wants to do like there's no like on when i was um in singapore like a few months ago i saw this couple so cute you know like they seem so adorable like he bought her um he bought her a uh, big big balloon that says my queen jia qi like oh my god so cute this is really really important so I also fall short on this like communication and this is like obviously like when you already like have a stronger connection with the person or just brief like talking about your expectations in a relationship I wouldn't suggest bringing this up on the first date because you're just getting to know someone but once you feel like the time is right and it's been sitting on your mind for a while it's a good time to bring up what are your goals of the relationship so then when things get more serious similar goals can be like what do you expect in a relationship so like you can be in an open relationship where you still like see other people so like not an exclusive so um, or it can be like an exclusive relationship where it's closed um, that means you guys are like exclusively seeing each other only I think 
we are living in 2021 now and like it's better to just be honest about it like instead of the person thinking that the other partner thinking that it's like closed and then the other one thinking that it's open and then it's just gonna be really awkward um number point number two of this is probably like how much time do you want to spend with your partner so for me um i tend to be really attached and very clingy as a girlfriend and i think it's something that i put across very openly like i like to spend a lot of time with my partner for me my love language is affection and touch and time so i like it when people i spend a lot of time with my friends as well and i spend a lot of time with my partner however you shouldn't neglect yourself that's just one thing i would say like always set time for yourself and have a space for yourself because being in your 20s i feel like it's quite an un stable time to have a serious 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 relationship unless you really know for a fact that you guys are gonna get married because when the person leaves gonna be like so sad <laughs> oh my god it's so sad but that's just life but yeah i think that's a really important one like how much time you want to spend with your partner like people have different attachment styles and what do you expect from the relationship the last thing so do you expect emotional sh 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 emotional support or sharing a community or like stability so like emotional support in the sense where like your partner al always has to be there for you always 24 7 no i mean obviously that's not fair but like you want your partner to be a pillar of support like for example i did not come from like the best um family and having a boyfriend was a safety net for me and um that allowed me to realize that that's an expectation that i put onto my partner and I think reevaluating things, obviously like everybody has different sort of traumas that they go through and do you want your re relationship to be able to support you and grow as a person? Obviously, you should also be independent and rely on yourself but at the same time, you should also have that sort of communication with your partner as to set certain expectations for yourself and your partner, obviously. And sexually also, I think it's very important like I mentioned this in my previous video but having an open communication when it comes to sex is so important and I feel like you can just bring it up in the bedroom yeah then you don't have to be shy but obviously speak about it in a respectful way yeah and I think I also mentioned like sharing a community so for me I like want to be very involved in my boyfriend's life or partner or someone that I'm seeing if it gets serious obviously like I want to meet your friends and I want to meet your family and I want there to be like a goal like are we gonna get married <laughs> I sound crazy and I feel like if you're just honest about it it just saves a lot of time so if the guy isn't on the same page the guy that you're dating isn't on the same page you can just openly call it out and say like sorry it's not working for me and then you protect yourself from getting hurt like setting those boundaries are really important and yeah we've come to the end of the video Yay, yes it's been i've been working on this for so long so i'm like so relieved to finally like get it out there and done and um i hope you guys enjoy remember to like and subscribe and i'll see you next week bye